Alright, here's another video update on the small engine dyno. Um, the last one I showed you how I had it hooked up to the Arduino and was doing a uh, weight reading off of the uh, pretty much the arm coming off the brake caliper. Well, since then I have modified that Arduino a little bit, hooked up a SD card um, chip to it and have it recording data logs onto the SD card. Pretty much you take the SD card out of it, throw it into your laptop, and it right now it's recording the data logs in the Megalog Viewer MS format. Um, I'm going to change that to um, WinLog, I think it's WinLog 7 or Win7 Dino or something like that. Um, that's coming, it just hasn't happened quite yet. Anyway, the other night I had I got the Arduino hooked up to it with the the new SD card and stuff like that. Um, got the setup running. I put we'll walk over here. Excuse my mess. Um, I've hooked this up, and you can see this is just hanging here. But I had this right here hooked up into an air pressure regulator. Um, a very it's not a fine resolution one. It does go from zero to one hundred. But I did have it hooked into an air pressure regulator, and I was turning the screw as slow as I could. Got this thing running up in RPM, and applied a very little bit of air to the brake, and the brake instantly applied. I had it sitting on this creeper in, in the actual garage part of my basement. <coughs> Excuse me. And anyway, applied the brake with the under load. The brake, I mean, it was... I'm thinking it was like between 20 and 25 PSI the brake applied in it like was right now and when that brake applied it instantly stalled the engine and jumped this whole deal off the creeper I had onto the floor <laughs> so the next run I had I took it off the creeper and made another pass at it trying to go slower with the air pressure regulator didn't matter the second I got it to where I would grab the brakes the brakes instantly grabbed and it went and tipped the whole thing sideways like where the spring is right down there was pointed at the ground so did that twice couldn't get around it and that's when I quit for the evening things I did learn from that though I need a finer control over the brakes um, I'm seriously thinking about picking up a Mac valve for it like a four port Mac valve possibly or something of the sort to do air pressure control into the brake caliper for a while I was thinking I was going to need hydraulic control because I didn't think air was going to be enough to apply the brakes on this. Air is plenty for a small engine. I may need to go to something different when I go larger, but for right now, air is more than enough for what I'm doing here. Um, and again, if I need to go to hydraulic, I can add to this dyno at will, pretty much. So I can change it at a future date. The other thing I noticed on my log is, and I'll put a photo up of my log anyway the RPM trigger on my log was very wavy um, it was like spiky up and down up and down up and down it was because I'm figuring it's because I didn't have enough resolution on my RPM input from my VR sensor and there's also something else going on with the way I have my VR sensor going into the Arduino and I'm going to talk about that in a minute but anyway I only had one bolt on this hub for VR sensor and now I've got two so that right there should give me enough resolution and if you see on here I actually have enough I have four holes there's one there and there's one down here on the other side so I can add up the four bolts onto that shaft if I need to um that should take care of the resolution I also have and what I was talking about was an issue with my Arduino input I have that VR sensor going into a homemade chip that I made. It's actually a, a prototype board. And I have four diodes. Pretty much I made a diode bridge. Um, that VR sensor puts out a sine wave in AC. So, in order to get it to a DC voltage, I did a diode bridge. So that way it would switch it from AC to DC voltage. And then from there, I... I uh, went and resisted it for an output to the Arduino. The only issue was is that VR sensor makes more than 5 volts. 
um, un under full song with one bolt, that thing could make, I think it was up to 10 volts, which would instantly fry an Arduino. So what I did was I took a Xenier diode, which is <coughs> a voltage limiting diode. What happens is underneath a certain voltage, um, I mean, whatever you know the diode is specced for, underneath that voltage, it acts like a normal diode. It lets current flow one way and bypasses it the other. So, whenever the voltage applied to it is beyond spec, and mine's five five volts, um, it acts like an extra leg, or it, get, it creates continuity between um, its poles of the uh, the Zener diode. And the way I have it set up currently is I have it set from the positive to the negative Zener diode. So that way, whenever it goes five over five volts, it's literally connecting the positive and negative together. And I've got a capacitor between the positive and negative legs to help overcome some of that clamping voltage. The next foot I'm going to show you is going to be my um, my output from my uh, oscilloscope. And this photo shows you the fact that <coughs> the Zener diode is working, as you can see in this photo, but it's pulling it straight to ground and then it's coming back up. I've tried to go around this in my Arduino programming and pretty much had it set up so that way I put it on what we consider a buffer. So what happened was is I was looking at the um, I have the, R, the VR sensor chip going into an interrupt pin on the Arduino Mega. And it's looking for a rise from zero to you know higher. So I have it set so that way whenever it rises it triggers and increases an RPM counter. Um, and then I have it set to where it ignores the rising trigger like I think it's like three milliseconds so I, I miss the, the spike down and the second rise of that um, that oscilloscope reading that I showed you. The only issue is I don't think my Arduino is fast enough to do that when I have more than one bolt on that shaft or two. So, because of that, I, I'm going to Google how to make that Xenier diode function without pulling it straight to ground. I just haven't figured it out yet. I know a capacitor with my oscilloscope, a capacitor helps. It doesn't bring it straight to ground, but it brings it almost to ground. Whereas, I would like for the peak to come up, level, and down. So, if you have any suggestions on that, please comment on this video. Um, and I will definitely take any input you guys have because I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm kind of doing this with the electrical know-how I learned in the automotive field and from college classes or technical school classes I took. But any help would be greatly appreciated. I'm pretty sure I can probably figure it out on Google, but I will take any help I can get. So... Those are the next things I've got to figure out before I um, do this dyno again. And the next time I will have this on video. Uh, the last time I tried this, I didn't have enough. I was in a major rush because I was getting late and I didn't have enough time to start up the camera. So I kind of regretted that at this point because it would have been fun to see this thing tip over. Um, next time, if that happens though, you're going to get it on video. But thank you for watching this video update. I'm hoping I'll get another one up soon with me getting more progress on this. And I'm just going to, as I said, I'm going to keep pumping out videos of the updates until I get this thing running. And then there will be a lot more video content of all the stuff I do with the engines after the dyno's made. So thank you for watching and stay tuned.